Tazkiyah, rectification, purification. Upon the subject of Tazkiyah, there's a very important point that has come to mind with regards to the subject of Tazkiyah because we all individuals are students of Tazkiyah, are students of this subject, and we are making effort on this path, on this subject, and we are trying. We are trying that Allah Ta'ala gives us the purification of our batin, of our inner self and our soul. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, may He in the Akhirah give us a high status. Every man is in this world who is trying, who is making effort, who is trying to improve. And obviously the effects of the dunya are there. But with regards to the Akhirah and the preparation for the Akhirah, the enjoyment is that when a person is traveling on the journey for the preparation of the hereafter, then Allah Ta'ala gives him the dunya as well, the ease in the dunya as well. And easily the problems and the difficulties of the world, the restrictions and hurdles are overcome. Because Allah is the Khaliq, He is the Creator, He is the Owner. When He sees that this man, this servant of mine is coming towards me and he wants to reach to his destination and he's preparing for that destination, then Allah Ta'ala clears the way. Allah clears the way for that person and from such a place or places Allah Ta'ala assists and helps the man is left astounded. The amazing. But this path that when a person embarks on this path then one special thing we need, we need to be careful of this point. We shouldn't rush. We need to have sabr. Patience. وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالْحَقِّ So Allah Ta'ala says in this path we need sabr. Patience, not uh, I started today and I've picked the tasbih today and I'm doing tasbih and tomorrow I need everything that I was for. I want Jannah today and the world, everything in my, in my hand. No, this is not the asul principle. My husband, my sheikh said that you can make steps, make effort, leave the conclusion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Leave the result to Allah and have hope and have hope and faith in Allah. Because a person who, for example, we can't have, you know, like severe examination and observation and demand. Uh, that, for example, an examiner who marks, oh, I'm going to take the marks off here for handwriting. We didn't put these uh, points down. No. Allah Ta'ala says, okay, he's making effort, give him more. Allah is not like the worldly examiner. Allah Ta'ala's assessment is that you made an effort, you didn't know anything, you try, give him double, Allah Ta'ala says. Give him double. This is Allah's justice. So we are in this field, we are on this path that we are weak and we are weak students. We haven't revised and prepared, but inshallah concessions will be given by the chief examiner, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is famous that when the water keeps on moving and flowing, it's pure. When it stops, then the stench comes and the dirt comes. So this destination is such, we need to have sabr and patience with content feeling and peace and satisfaction and with yaqeen, certainty that Allah, you have made us go on this path and there's no better path than this. That everything, everything we will ask from our Rabbi Hakiki, our true Lord, we will raise our hands to Allah, we will ask from Allah, we will bow to Allah, we will remember Allah. And all of the links with the dunya then, you can say eliminated at that time, the person directly asks from his Lord. And Allah says, wait and see what and when I will give to you and just quietly accept you do what I told you to do. You do what I told you to do. You pick up the tasbih and just say, Allah, Allah, then don't think, how will it happen? When will it happen? Why won't it happen? Like once in the hospital and I was unwell and I remember a good statement because you hear good things in certain places. So a person is upset, he's ill, he's in hospital. And that person, the nurse said in the hospital, why are you distressed that you have come into the place of protection, a safe place? I said, that's a very good thing that the nurse said that she said, you've come to the uh, safe place. The doctors are here, nurses are here. Why are you afraid now? You are, you've come to a protected safe place. So don't worry that we are on a safe journey. On a safe journey. So what's there to be worried about? We are on a safe journey. No power of the dunya can give you loss. Why? Because Allah is the malik. No one can give you pain. No one can give you distress. Nobody can give you loss. No one can oppress you. Nobody. Why? Because we are on the safe path. 
Alhamdulillah, Allah is watching, He will remove the hurdles, the obstacles and the issues. So what's the first condition? A person should be steadfast, consistent, don't shake, don't, don't shudder and shake and wilt. So on this subject, on this uh, sort of broader subject, there's a point in my mind with relation to tazkiyah, purification of the heart and soul, which is given the title Sufism. Sufism is not a word, but this title has been given to this subject in science, and others have taken this word in a wrong way, it's become the means to disrespect. And people are afraid nowadays to utilize the word Sufi or Sufism, because it's a respectful word, it's a great science of Islam, but in reality, the real word is Sufi. That we see in the world, you will get contaminated products, pure products, uh, milk that's diluted, and uh, genuine milk. And you'll get the Sufi, real Sufi, and the the fake Sufi. You'll get both types. So it doesn't mean that the science and the subject and this important uh, matter is wrong. No. So there's an important point in my mind that the path of the subwoof purifying the soul. And we need to understand that this point is one of the foundational factors that on this maqam, to get to this position, that's when a per- Allah Ta'ala gives walaya and his friendship to a person. And Allah Ta'ala declares that this person is my friend. So this is the action that I would like to share with you. So I'll give you an example that nowadays is happening a lot in the world around us. Uh, now, there was a person who just died and he passed away from this dunya. And you are aware. And due to his death, uh, quite a lot of people are talking and there are meetings, uh, seminars, and there's khatam, and there's Isali uh, uh, the thawab, uh, and he, that example is in my mind at the moment because at this moment time, according to this period and generation, this is a unique thing. You understand? Unique? It's a unique point that people die every day, morning and evening. We read about this, but his death, that it had an effect on people. And you all are also included in this somewhere. You would have had the news and reached the news that you've heard and seen. And somebody would have been shocked or surprised. And under, some people have understood the reality. And me, I also, I am included amongst you that after this death, an ajeeb uh, feeling in the whole dunya, not just in one place, but in the whole dunya. And the surprising thing is that every part of the world, and every, whether it's religious, Sufi, friends of Allah, the different types of Darul Ulooms, different places, everywhere, that it's a feeling about this individual. And why is this? We have to think about this. Why is this? Because there are many people who die on a daily basis. What's the reason that lots of people in different sectors and fields and careers and, and uh, places and institutions have been affected? Because such a death, we have heard about this, that uh, that Rasulullah has given good news to him as well. The person who passed on, may Allah Ta'ala accept and may Allah allow this to happen like we heard the news. And this is a big news. So why is this? Why is this that a person's got this such good news and reward? And I'd like to share this point with you that this is a unique event that's in our minds. So who was this individual that he's so unique and how, what was it that um, he had a ajeeb death and he left his memories, fond memories to this extent that his death, that the janazah when it went in the country, that the janazahs, that three army, the officers were also the heads. They uh, were saluting him in the janazah. In other words, we say that if we look on a worldly reason, it must be a big high status person whose janazah goes like this, that who is saluted and all the army heads, they are included and um, they respect him and give him the status and he was with uh, respect uh, buried and in the janazah. Maybe there were some people like this, maybe there were very few people who in Karachi were not there and there was like, you can say, somber mood everywhere. So, this is a unique point, a unique uh, situation. So this has all happened. And the uh, you can say the sadness is there, but today in this day and age, when this is a sort of message bi idhnillah in this day and age from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where does it happen? Where does it emanate from? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This isn't a suddenly uh, occurring fact. Every day people die in the world. And definitely, definitely, many greater people will have left from this world. Why? How do we know who is great and who is not great? Who is higher and not higher? But the way that this was demonstrated, this individual, this person who died. And this was the will of Allah who showed this, that I will die tomorrow, you will die, everyone will die, people are coming and going. 
So Allah Ta'ala made it apparent, and this is an ajeeb sort of event, and Allah made this apparent, and we think upon this, that what's the reason behind this that Allah made this apparent? إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِ لَا فِي اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ Allah Ta'ala says, the people of wisdom, they think about the signs of Allah. The signs of Allah. They don't just take it for, for just granted. They think, a person deeply thinks, what's happened? What's Allah Ta'ala showing behind this? So today in this day and age, Islamically we know that how such a dangerous generation and a threat, you can say in a sad generation, in a, in a, in a bad position we are. So what's the message that Allah Ta'ala has given for the whole dunya? There must be a reason behind this. This event and this mourning and recognition and memories. Have you thought about this? I've thought about it. So what I've thought, shall I tell you? Okay, fine. So it's not necessary that you will agree with me, but I'll just share with you my thoughts and feelings. So I had a big fikr. And don't worry, Allah, this event that took place, Allah, what is it that you want to share with us? What is the message you're giving to us? What's the point that's within this that you have made apparent and obvious and you've showed the heights here? So I researched and looked on the angle of tazkiyah. Rectification. It's obvious that that person, that man, that brother who passed away, that he had quite a few good points. He was an artist, he was an ex-singer, and he was in the dunya, and he was immersed in the dunya. He was previously. This is the history, the early part of his life. We started from there. He started from there, isn't it? And then, due to this, this happened that he was an artist and he left the dunya. Maybe he was a very good artist, he used to sing good songs, and he was a guitarist in the world. So all of the people, did they appreciate him for this? This is a question mark. Did they appreciate him for his artistry that he did before? And the second thing is that he had many qualities. One quality that comes is that a stage came in his life, he changed. He reformed. He improved. So what happened? That he accepted Islam. He changed himself. Is this the reason why Allah Ta'ala gave him the height and the recognition? And respect, because many people do this. There are people who sing, there are artists who change, they come to Islam, they've gone. You know them, I know them. I had link with music before, I know this. I know this. And many artists and uh, people who um, were masters in music, and they've changed into Islam and departed, so they won't recognize. So change, this is my field. I am on this path of the skin. I've seen many people changing. Improving, so this is not unique. So there's nothing unique that many people are talking on this point, aren't they? That he changed. Wow, Subhanallah! He was an artist, and then he changed like this. But there are many more severe and worse examples in front of me in life that such people who Allah Taala changed them that you cannot even imagine that they would change. So is this the question mark? Is this why he was recognized? And there's another point people are discussing that Janab, after changing, he. Um, he took hold of a line and a path and that was a very great line and and he was doing uh, good work and many people are going and coming in that line in that path so i don't think that that's what he did that was a, a very unique point so the head of the jamaat that they should have been recognized more when they passed away do you understand what i'm saying the head of the jamaat he should have been recognized more when he, when he, he he passed away so I'm not agreeable that these are the reasons why he was recognized. These three reasons, I don't accept that he changed or he was an artist before and he was known worldwide or he did this certain work. Or some people say he recited Nath very nicely and he left songs and he started to recite Nath. And I've seen many people's lives in front of me. Many shairs and poets, they stood in the Tawbah and then they stood in that same night, they started to recite Nath and started to read Nath and write Nath. And there are, apart from this, many people who are Nasheed artists who read I've seen people in my life and I used to like and I still like them and they've passed away some and beautiful nath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and beautiful nats and spiritually they used to recite the nats. They are also present. They are examples. So do you understand I'm giving examples? So this is something to think about. So the heart doesn't accept that it's due to the nath that he was recognized that Allah ta'ala is showing this shan. Do you accept this? Is this the reason why he was recognized even when he passed away? So you're still thinking, because I grab points from a different angle, in a different way. Because Sufi, and the Sufi who is Ibn al-Waqt, remember, he doesn't follow the time. Rather, the time, he, dunya is going one way and he goes the other way. Yes, so people say he's mad crazy, but he's the most intellectual person. Yes, and afterwards you realize that who is the intellectual person? This is with the Sufi, isn't it? So that's why that my thought process is going a bit different. That can this be the situation? I'm thinking. Are all these the reasons why he was respected daily and loved greatly? This is a topic. 
deen is telling us what is the reason because we want to realize the sufi hazrat the brothers that allah that this person and this happened because you were happy obviously obviously you were happy with him you were pleased with him so for which reason were you pleased with him so we can do this as well say subhanallah say subhanallah because the Sufi is in what? So we have realized he is in his Jannah, wherever, except for what's happened to him. He, Allah knows best and he knows. But we are now trying to learn from this. That what's the point Allah tell us? So we can also start this and we can also depart like this in a nice way. We, we desire. So we are digging and we are scraping and analyzing. And we say, what is the point in that person's life that we need to learn from? If we say was this and this reason, what's the point of that? What's the benefit of that? Here's a straightforward point. Hasbi Tawfiq, raise your two hands and do dua. And that's it. And say Allah, inna Allah, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi We say he's gone and we live our lives. But no, the point doesn't finish here. The story doesn't finish here. Allah Ta'ala says that if this is the point behind my pleasure and this person attained this ending, then Allah, there's one point. You cannot just give to one. Rather, you've made examples that whoever does his action like he did, then he will become like this as well. This is Allah's rahmah. Mercy tells us this, isn't it? Yes, so why haven't we thought until today about this? Has anybody thought like this? No. We are silly and crazy foolish that the signs of Allah we don't accept. We read the Quran, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَةٍ لِأُولِي الْبَاب The stars, the moons, and everything around us, the oceans and the signs. We don't think about these things. That the moon and the stars, what is the date once Eid? This is what we follow. Allah says, look, the constellations and the signs and why are the stars moving and the moon and the planets and the solar system. These are the signs of Allah and His beauty and His wisdom and glory. We don't look at this. We just follow the moons. We look worldly reasons for the month so that we know what to do next. Allah Ta'ala says, in everything I've created, there's nothing in the universe, the world that I've created without any reason. There are two parts. One is the genuine reason for creation. One is the fake reason that we take to understand things. Allah Ta'ala says, when I create something from any part of the creation, and if we see, we see one thing. Yes, we see for example a goat, when we sacrifice it, and the time of Eid, we will get the worldly benefit, and a spiritual, real, genuine reason for doing it. We will eat the meat, that's the physical reality. If we think about the Akhirah, then you will go into an ajeeb thought, and your tears won't stop while after you sacrifice the goat. So two types of people you see at the sacrifice time of the goat. One will be the people who will be sacrificing the animal, Eid al adha they'll be going into sujood and crying, and there'll be others eating paratha and meat and the meat and the food. So that second person thought on the basis of the world when he is sacrificing Allah Ta'ala's uh, order. And the second, the first person who gave qurbani and sacrificed is thinking spiritually, Allah, the reward and the spirituality. So everything we do are sitting here. There are two reasons for everything in the world. Everything that is existent, that is present, there are two parts to the everything in the world. One is the spiritual reality. One is the physical part of it in the world. So one is the worldly reason. One is the spiritual real reason. So we need to look at the spiritual, real, genuine reason behind these actions. Because we are Sufis and we are trying to reach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's nearness. We want to attain Allah ta'ala's pleasure. And we have selected this path that we want to travel to Allah Ta'ala's happiness. We need to attain this destination. Isn't this our objective? Is this not? Alhamdulillah. So, as I was saying, that we need to see here that from all of these factors I mentioned, that is, is, are these the reasons that he was an artist, he left the artistry, then he came towards deen. We say he was a lover of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes, I've seen such lovers of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As Al-Laknabi, Rahmatullahi was an ashik, even today in his grave in Karachi. Such his nats, and if you listen to them, you would be totally in love with the deen. And uh, his name, maybe I'll remember his full name in the words. And he was, mashallah, a great uh, pious predecessor, and he recited nats. And people say that for this reason, Allah gave him aruj. People are saying this, isn't it? So all these words are coming that this person was an artist, he was a nathwan, he loved Rasulullah sallam, etc. He, he, he propagated the deen. But still we haven't come to the crux, to the, to the real point. That why did this happen with this person? We say, oh, he was shaheed. That he had an accident and he passed away. And maybe the shahada, the martyrdom. And what about the other 47? They also were Muslims. They also had a relationship with this deen. Okay, so they all died the same way. So other sisters who uh, they lost their brothers and brothers who lost their sisters and people who had been fathers would have been detached from their children and there were mothers and their children were at home and let's look in their homes, look at the, the, the distress and the heartbreak in their homes and their janazah should have been the same. So what we realize is not due to martyrdom or shahadat that 
this recognition that's not due to deen or tabliq or music or nuts. So this point is not coming to mind. And look at here. This is Allah's shan and glory. What is the point? That he changed. He came from his previous life to Islam. He propagated deen. He recited nuts and the sheeds. And he was shaheed in an accident. But these are not the points that why he was loved and recognized. If we see in the history of the Sufis. And we look at the experience of their life, then many Sufis will have seen, this will have happened with them, that when they departed from this world, then the special murids, a special murid would have seen a dream of the sheikh, and the murid asked the sheikh a question, the Hazrat, tell me, that how did Allah Ta'ala treat you? How did you fare after death? Because a person has this, that my husband's gone, I don't know what's happening, which maqam will he be in, what's happening with him, what questions, and he sees his shaykh, mashallah. And his aqidah is this, that after the Nabi, my shaykh is the greatest, whatever it is. And whoever doesn't have this aqidah doesn't have the shaykh. It doesn't have a shaykh. Yes, because a person has to have these thoughts. If he's a murid, a student, he should love his shaykh so much that after Rasulullah says, it's my shaykh who will give me the path. And the person who doesn't have this aqidah, he cannot reach to his destination. And he is stuck and confused. Brothers, close your eyes and just say, after Rasulullah is our hazrat, our shaykh. And this is where I will get told my face from all ilam, shalam, everything comes under the hukum, the order of the shaykh. And when the murid reaches his point, he's fanaful shaykh, then Allah Ta'ala gives him a ruj and the heights and achievement. Because his yaqeen is strong, his foundation is strong and now what will come after this Allahu Akbar what the yaqeen that will come after this and this yaqeen he will not shake he will not will it doesn't matter all the tests come in his life but he will not shake because for believing in Allah for believing in Rasulullah and to humble himself in front of the orders he is prepared where subhanallah he was prepared to listen to my wali so when a person for example accepts for example a architect a builder constructs a building first he puts the foundation We've seen when the foundation, what happens? A lot of people say, oh, let's sacrifice some goats today. Why are we pouring the foundations for the building? And this is what's happened in our countries. Oh, today we're putting the foundations for the building. And we're worried about the foundations. And we have so much uh, like enjoyment when the foundation is laid and when the roof goes on the top, uh, the ceiling. And you're aware of construction. And when the ceiling is, oh, today the ceiling is going to go on the ceiling. Come, come today, let's watch. And these two phases are very important in the soul as well. The roof and the foundation the roof and the foundation we see this point if the foundation is strong alhamdulillah then the building will go higher and if the ceiling and the roof is strong then the rain will never leak through the fitna will not come shaitani effects will not come shaitani thoughts won't come because the chat the roof has come on the top you understand what I'm saying so these two things are very important for us so we come back to what I'm discussing so is dahir obvious that ever student murid has love with the shaykh and he sees his shaykh Allah show my shaykh in the dream we see this in history there are many examples many examples many many in the hundreds thousands of who they saw the, the student saw the shaykh in the dream and the shaykh says the point and this is the point I'm telling you now at that time the murid is amazed when the shaykh the teacher declares that this just this small matter Allah gave you this status and we thought your nights at the hajjud and prayer and your ibadat, we thought that Allah Ta'ala's friend, he becomes a wali due to ibadah and worship. And we think this is our basis of uh, criteria that the, the teacher, the shaykh who wakes up in the night, yes, it's important. I understand this is important and necessary. But there are other reasons. This is not the criterion for what Allah Ta'ala will be happy. Oh, you've got a lot of worship and I'll make you wali of Allah. No, a person can become a wali on this, but this is not the reason why a person becomes a wali. Why? Because the only Allah, the wali of Allah, when the wali says that, he says, Allah has put everything of mine to one side, my worship, my status, my prayer, and he accepted my one night, my two rakah, and he forgave me for my two units of salah on that one night. So, the Allah Ta'ala really liked this action? Oh, this is easy, I can do this as well, says the student. And you see this, isn't it? The message comes. So, it's obvious that such an action... A person, he doesn't pay attention, the only Allah. The, what is it that they did in their life? That Allah Ta'ala was going once, and from my mouth, this kalam I recited, and Allah liked this kalam so much, and He forgave me. He says, the wali of Allah who's passed away. This was this recitation of many Sufis and walis of Allah, imams, from the imams, even with the imams, the great scholars, these things happen, muhaddithin, and scholars of hadith, events occurred in their lives, and they say that I was going, I like this kalam, this recitation, I recited it, and I was forgiven that day, I didn't even know myself. And no, Allah didn't ask me that that this many hadith you recorded and recited and you had students. I wasn't asked about any of this. Allah Ta'ala, all of this one, Allah says, I'm forgiving you for this one kalima that you recited that day on that time. 
Aha. You see Imam Shafi, it happened with one person, that on one durood he was forgiven. Do you know this? This event? He said, why were you given forgiveness? That I used to recite this durood in the night, Allah, Allah Ta'ala liked this so much, He forgave me. So here the point arises that never reject or deny or shun a small deed. Keep being consistent because Allah with your mercies, forgive me for this reason because I am not courageous enough to be very frank Allah. I say this very frank. We try, we try our hardest and we say we make effort but we're, in that living, we're living in that day and age now, that generation that we can't make so much effort. People in our previous ages used to live 40 years in jungles, isolation, seclusion, dhikr, fasting for days on end and making big effort and Today, the reality is we can't do so much. We are very weak physically in doing ibadah. So Allah Ta'ala doesn't put our efforts to waste. Because walaya and friendship of Allah will continue until the day of judgment. Walaya Zawala will keep coming to the world. So Allah Ta'ala says small points, and these things that have been made obvious and apparent. Why? So the weak people like us can understand this. They don't think it was a little thing that Allah Ta'ala isn't pleased with a small action. Allah makes a person a wali even through so, so-called small actions. So, oh, this is durood. Oh, if you read durood every day, make it a habit that this is durood. Okay, I will read this every day, etc. And it's important. Make it, yes, a practice according to your own recognition practice. Okay, I'll read this five times. And that five times may come until death comes. Keep on reading that durood. If you've made it your action, and inshallah Allah will give you the word. And we're hopeful that Allah will forgive us to do this. What do we do? We say today I made a program five today. Five durood. After two, three weeks, Mulana Sahib comes, he tells us hadith that you need to do this action, make do that. Okay, let's leave this five durood, let's start that action. So we leave the first thing, we go towards that thing. Then after that, a few weeks go, we start that uh, wazifa lesson, then we sit in another majlis, another person gives us another hadith. Because there are many hadiths and many paths and ways, and we don't have enough breaths, that there are many paths to, to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why I stated, make one sheikh, one teacher, sit down in front of him, learn from him, and follow his prescription, and then you don't need other wazifas. There are many thousands, many different ways of doing things. Don't consider anything else. Be happy that I want to reach Allah with a shortcut, so I don't need to follow any other advice. I've got the advice of my teachers. So our Mashaik, our Sufi Azrat, they've said that don't sit in too many gatherings. You've received your destination. We go to too many gatherings, you'll get confused. Oh, this, he was saying this. Oh, this sheikh said this. This teaches this. And you go for a few days, then you see another kitab, a book. So it's also explained to us to read less books. What's the need? What's the need to read too many books? When you've reached, achieved your journey and destination, you understand it. The kitab gives you information just to amal. You've got the information from the teacher. That's enough for you. And fulfill that, that's enough for us. That's enough for us. That's what I'm explaining to you. The examples that the walis of Allah have given to us, that's enough. That don't worry about little actions. Do them regularly, steadfastly. And even if it looks to you very small, Allah. Allah has given us His name. Can there be any smaller in length name than this? Can there be any shorter wazifa lesson than this? And what's the reward? Oh, this is not enough. I need to do more. Teachers not giving me enough. That's it. I've told people, they just say Allah. They say, that's it? Just Allah? Can I say more? Can I, and I give the answer, you will have said this to me as well. The, oh, let's go back to Hazrat Sahib. Is this enough? Is there anything else I should say, Allah? Hazrat, give me a long prescription, something written, read this Uru Shreef, this many thousands, then I'll be satisfied and happy that I've got enough servants of Allah. Is there any greater, more powerful name than Allah? When I give this Zazifa, we should go into prostration. Allah, you shukr. You give me so much mercy. You give me the shortcut dhikr that you have allowed me to connect to you. Are you not happy with this? And we think this is not enough. This is rahma, mercy, karam upon karam, mercy, fadl upon fadl of Allah. And those poor souls who don't have much intellect and the veils have not been removed from their aql, they don't understand. They say, teacher, is this what you're giving to me? Allah, no, let me go to another shaykh. He gives more wazifa. He'll give me books, read this much in the afternoon, in the night, do this much dhikr. If you do this much, this will happen. And we're trying. And how many days do we do it? Ten days and after that we give up. We give up. Here, this name is so beautiful, weighty Allah. That you want more? Every moment you can recite Allah's name and do Allah wake up. Allahu Akbar. And every time, Allah, Allah. What a beautiful wazifa that we've been given. A lesson of dhikr. Isn't it? We don't even do this. O oh, servants of Allah, the tasbihs are given to you. I make the tasbihs myself. Everything I give to you, resource, that just say the name of Allah, beautiful. Allah, 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 Allah. And with yaqeen, that there's no greater name than this. And this is our yaqeen, that when we have the wazifa, there's no greater shaykh than this, my teacher. And there's no greater name than this that we've been given. And both things, azim, we have got. And if I am weak, I will be weak. But I will inshallah take everything before I depart from this world in terms of reward from this name of Allah. Everyone got yaqeen of this? You're truthful, honest, you will not leave empty-handed. Just three things of yaqeen. Your shaykh, 
your teacher in the name of Allah and Allah the Mawla. The name of Allah and Mawla Allah. And all the doors will open for you. All the doors. Anyway, so we were talking that there can be small actions that give a person wilayat and the friendship of Allah. Now we have to see that let's look towards our life now and think that Allah Ta'ala, that this maqam, this status you gave. So how can we ask that person that Allah, you tell us that we, the Junaid Bayi, tell us that how comes you attain this status? Everyone's seeing dreams. And I went towards Allah for two, three days. And the point that came into my heart, I will share with you. Subhanallah. I didn't see no dream. But the point that came into my heart, I thought today I will share that with my friends. Subhanallah. And I really like this point. This is a hadith. Ah, subhanallah. So this point that's come to me is a very small point, but massive in terms of recognition and weight. And in the Sufi uh, circle, it's very weighty. And this is where Allah Ta'ala gives His wilayat, friendship. And if a person doesn't reach to this maqam, I'll tell you the maqam. That you cannot get Allah's friendship. And the maqam that this Sufi has attained, this is all the efforts for this maqam. All the effort we make is for this maqam, for this status. And it's very important, very important, significant. This is a hadith in Sahih Muslim. The hadith I will start and explain. وَمَا تَوَازَ أَحَدُ لِلَّهِ إِلَّا تَوَازَ لِلَّهِ This hadith, it states, Sahih Muslim hadith, that the person who, for Allah Ta'ala's sake, he takes tawaza, humbleness, humility, Allah Ta'ala elevates that person. Elevates that my Hazrat, if we see Hazrat's Maktubat, the letters I've got, maybe there's en- there's not one letter in which Allah, my Hazrat would have reminded me, not reminded me that have humility, tawaza, tawaza, lower yourself, humble yourself, humble yourself and have humility, sincerity. So I couldn't understand what is tawaza that my Hazrat is speaking about, wazifa, humble, tahajjud, dawabin, these things. Why does Hazrat keep saying, have tawaza? There was probably not one letter in which Hazrat didn't say this. So this point that comes up in this individual who passed away and Allah gave him the heights was his tawaza, his humility, his humbleness. Now I'll remind you of all the points that today everyone is speaking about him, media, anybody. There's one point that everything concludes upon that this man was very great akhlaq person. Do people not say this? He had a great o'clock. This is the conclusion. He had music, he was an artist, he used to sing a lot, Nats and Othan. And it all comes to the end that he was a very good mannered and well behaved person. He was happy and joyful and he had a great o'clock. And this is what everyone's saying in every sector, everyone's saying this. But nobody understood this message. That we look at other things and parts of his life, but this was the reality message. That within him he had a point. And Tawazu, I'll tell you, what is Tawaza? That in the soul of this is a beautiful thing because it's for Allah and everything comes for Allah, isn't it? Subhanallah. So the sawwuf, mashallah, it's a subject. One is a murid and one is a murad. There are two words, ba murad and a murid in the soul. What is ba murad? Is that person that Allah Ta'ala, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, he, Allah Ta'ala gives the rahma, gives the mercy. I'll tell you the part of the Quran here that Allah Ta'ala Himself selects a person. This is Fadlullah. Yes, so somebody can be a wali by birth that Allah Ta'ala Himself chooses that person. That person is chosen by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He doesn't need to make effort automatically. But the sunnah, the sunnah the ilahi is that person, he has to still make effort. Allah Ta'ala says, when you make effort and strive and attain this maqam, which maqam that I will say with happiness that this person is my friend and I announce in the world, then for that what do we need? Subhanallah. And other people are those who are selected by Allah. So what I understand that this person, he was due to the Ramallah, Allah Ta'ala selected this person with his mercy. Subhanallah. That's why I state that he's selected. I don't know myself this happened. I don't know this happened. Or I did this. I heard these things from the people. That I thought it was this and this happened. And he's coming again. So all of these are signs that this person he had none of his own effort. And the quality is nothing. I'll tell you the truth. Rather, what was it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's father and karam, he was selected by Allah. Chosen. Chosen by Allah. So this sif, this attribute, tawaza, humility was hidden within him. Hidden. This sif, this attribute, this quality was hidden within him. How? I'll tell you an event of his, subhanAllah. That he was on the heights in singing. He was an actor. Artist, dancer, you know that. He had a band, he had the heights, he had showbiz, money, cars, women, everything. Recognition, and he was walking once, or he was in his car in Karachi, and it was night time, evening time, or afternoon time, something like that. And he he was driving at a big car, and he was driving, 
And while he was driving, a dog came in the way and he hit the dog with the car. What would me and you do at that time? We would just turn to the side and drive off. Especially that country where we live. We don't even see this, that the dog has died. Somebody will come and pick it up. Rather, we swear the dog always oh, damaged the car. And we'll uh, say, oh, this, this committee, the municipality, they don't even see the dogs and they're in the way. And then we swear a few times. And how sad that, what do we do? We come out to the car and see, is there a dent on my car? Damage, scratch. This is what we do, isn't it? We blame the dog or the people in the municipality, the councillors. And we say, oh, the, the cat is coming the way of my car and broken my headlamp. So all oh, these animals are keeping in the way. And this is arm, common. And look at him. That such much money and wealth and recognized person, status. And he stopped his car. He stopped his car. I'm talking about that time. Because as I said, that I go deep in the points and I look in the points of the world. Why did this happen? I'm sharing with you. If you like what I'm saying, accept it. Why say, oh, this is a madman. He keeps thinking about things like this. So a big message for us today is for Sufis in this. After that, he disembarked from his car. He stopped his car after hitting the dog. And after coming out of his car, he went straight to the dog. And first he shook the dog. There's any life in the dog. Give some water. He said he had died. The dog had died. He was finished. What did he do then? This brother, he put his car to the side. And he picked up the dog and with ease and other manners he put the dog in the car and he got to certain places doing this on his own and he dug a hole and easily nicely he lowered the dog into the grave and put the soil over the grave and then he and he grabbed his head and then he said that I have not heard this event anywhere and it's never come because we we get to the depths that this is the asal point that he put took his head in his hands and walked it then. He did tawbah from all of his sins. He repented. This was his first event when he met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the veil removed from his tawaza because he had this tawaza. He didn't have to make struggle, effort because Allah ta'ala selected that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chosen him, selected him. Allah wanted to make him an example in this generation that become human beings, that you are striving and make an effort that attain this insaniyat. And how to live as a human being. And I'm showing you here the uruj, the high state of this man. The Allah Ta'ala, he didn't need to show his glory, his janazah, and his stories in the world. Allah Ta'ala doesn't need this. Did Allah Ta'ala want to become elevated? Does Allah Ta'ala get elevated due to this? Was he a Nabi? No. But Allah Ta'ala wanted to demonstrate to us, for us, that here's a misal, an example, that understand people, that this quality and attribute of humility, sincerity, and friendliness... And this is the point that comes to me. That for the pleasure of Allah, the biggest thing for the Akhirah will be tawaza. Humility and humbleness. And I'll tell you the hadith alongside this. What will be? Tawaza. Humbleness and sincerity and humility. Allah says, I elevate that person. And there's no limit to elevating a person's rank and status due to tawaza. And tawaza is such a great thing that is very difficult to come in life. Why? Why? Because what is there in opposition to tawaza? When a person is humble and has humility and sincerity and he's genuine, then the opposite to that is kibr and pride and shirk. So these are two extreme opposites, just like night and day. So a person who comes out of tawaza, out of humility and humbleness and sincerity, then it's like he has gone away from the path. So a person who comes to tawaza and humility and humbleness, then he's come out of darkness into light. But the person, if he doesn't go to that haq, then he's staying in the darkness and pride and kibar, and then he has very few chances. But the person has many chances in life to reform and improve. They come and go and come and go. So we are desperate. We need to make severe effort. The tazkiyah is not a small thing. The Allah brought this for us. That this is not a choice for us, my friends. In qiyamah we will realize that what is the condition of our prayer, our sujood, our prostration, our tabliq and doing dhikr and we all all the subjects will come out and will be explained to us I tell you all the subjects will come out all the actions will come out and they'll be scattered why will they be scattered? because if we don't have tawaza humility, sincerity and humbleness then our deeds will be scattered and lost in kibar because we don't know maybe our actions are stuck or trapped in kibar and pride and self-recognition so this is the standard of humility and sincerity even if the young child is sitting here even if I am not humble and I don't and extend humility to this child, then I've got an action mixed with shirk. So this is the basis of my tawazo that I've been born in this world, I've been created, and the criteria for my humanity, my quality of, of a human being is that everything around me is better than me. We should think like this and feel like this, that I'm sitting in this 
company of the world. And in the world, the most dirty and worst individual, the worst place is me, and the worst person is me, and I should say that this is the best place for me, and I should be satisfied that I'm in the worst place, and everyone should have a better place than me. This is the waza. So this whole dunya and the world around us is such a place that we should consider ourselves the least and the worst person in the world. The universe is me. I am worse than those people, worse than the dogs and the animals, the swine. I'm not, I'm not giving this example. Great Sufi of the time. As a Mujad al Rahmatullah, I'm giving his example. This is not a small thing. I'm not speaking about, talking about a small person because he was at the heights of Tawazu. He was so humble. He had humility to the extreme. And Rasulullah explained about this point. That everything comes from hadith. What example Rasulullah gave? He was present and subhanallah, the majlis was there and the people were present in the gathering and an individual came into the gathering. And there was um, blood coming out, his hand was cut and he had blood from his body and his clothes were dirty. And look at today's generation. And everything, he was disheveled and there were people there who had prayed and ibadah. All of us in the world today think we are good. That everyone see that Rasulullah gave the example that you are this. This is what we are. So Allah's Nabi says, he was in the gathering, he saw that this man... He's come and everyone shook. That where's this man come from? That nobody was happy that he should allow that person to sit next to him. Everyone was eating. Yeah? Nobody allowed him to even sit next to him. Forget about sharing the food with him. They didn't even want him to sit with themselves. And here see Allahu Akbar. Rahmatullah Alameen. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The ta'aleem, the lesson, the education. When Rasulullah saw him, he called him Ta'al Hina. Ta'al hina, ta'al hina, come close to me, close to me. He sat and Rasulullah allowed him to sit next to him. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And sitting next to him Allah's Nabi Sallallahu said Eat with me Eat And eat with me Alongside me And he, that person was eating And Rasulullah was looking at him closely Is there an example like this? And this is called Tawaza Humility Humbleness Sincerity Because he's the Nabi of his time Great rank and status So what we realize That this example That's being demonstrated Such a great person Rasulullah Sallallahu The greatest Nabi And today is there any other great example for us? There are many examples. One or two walis of Allah were passing and there was this, the mud splash and the dog was coming and the dog speak, my brothers, the dog speak. They have senses. Allah Ta'ala has given them senses. They have understanding and awareness. And they are akulams at this moment of ours. But there, it's not that Allah Ta'ala says that they have no worth or no value. They are there. Allah Ta'ala said that these people, these uh, in the world, the animals, they have understanding, recognition. For example, we drive cars. When we drive a car, we do the dua. Subhanallah, the sakran, the long dua. We say, Allah, you have given us this transport. It's in your control. Otherwise, if it's not in your control, then how can we drive this without your permission? So the whole universe, we are utilizing it with the permission of Allah, with the control of Allah. Otherwise, we could not do this. So the dog came. There was a mud splash there and there were two Sufis walking. And the Sufis went to the side and the dog stopped there. The dog stopped and said, Oh Sufi Sahib, I am najis, yes, impure, fair enough. But one point here that this water on the ground and the mud, and to consider that I am impure, that if the mud was to come into your body, you could clean this, the, the, the stain. But the makhluk of Allah, the creation of Allah, to consider the creation of Allah, the animals as lower than you, then this stain will be on your heart and it will not be able to be removed on the day of judgment. So this is tawaza. The physical stain may go, but the spiritual stain in the heart cannot. So, so on this example, there was no salah. Junaid Bai gave us the example at that time. He had no salah, no tabligh. But Allah selected him. He did tawbah and he didn't stand until Allah Ta'ala didn't make him a human being. Because he had tawaza, humility, humbleness. Allah removed the parda, the veil. And he had murad. And he didn't have to do mujahidah. And so what mujahid did he do? And after that, mashallah, he had the mics and he would carry on mashallah and uh, doing his pastime and stuff. So do you understand what I'm saying? So history tells us this. History tells us this, mashallah, he had tawaz and humility. And the rest of his history, it all revolves around this, on this tawaz, humility, humbleness, sincerity. They are beautiful examples, ajeeb, unique in his life. Until today, his nath has not gone too high. Everywhere he would sit with tawaz, subhanallah. I'll give you an example. What is tawaz? Humbleness, humility. That that action, that action, that condition that we consider that this for me to do this, that it is below my status. I'm higher than this and this will degrade me, lower me. So I can't do this. I cannot be here. And this is called kibr and pride. And to consider that this is greater than my status 
but I am less than this, I am worse than this, and we accept this, that person has humility and humbleness. For example, you are walking or traveling, and somebody sat next to you, and you're eating, somebody's sitting and eating, he's your friend, he's poor. He says, come, where are you going? Sit and eat with me. And you are rich, wealthy, you say, oh, if I sit here and eat with him, he is my friend, but he's my class fellow. And this happens in life, and I'm speaking... In my country, and we're in university, and somebody becomes rich, and somebody's poor, and he doesn't sit with him, and he's sitting down and eating, and he was a free time, and he's eating. Another person passes by, and he's got status, wealth, and money. He says, oh, come, come on, brother. Come and sit down. Where are you going? Sit with me. Bismillah, let's eat together. And now, that person, he cannot sit there. He's saying, oh, this place is dirty, and less well of people are here. So the clash with the pride comes in. Now. He goes, if, if I sit here now, and someone sees me, oh, my, my nose will be stained. I'm sitting on the footpath and eating with this person. I'm rich and wealthy. And if a Mulana Sahib comes, a big Mulana Sahib, I'll give you an example. And he's accepted, got status, Muqarrar, and Mulana, and there's a gathering. Isn't it? And he's not called to the front. And he's sitting at the back, and he's pr- not prepared to sit at the back. And he's in his mind, he's thinking, if I sit at the back, I'll be sat with the common people. This is not my status. Someone's going to call me out. I've got to go to the front. I've got to go to the front. Isn't it? Have you seen this? And one side comes, and he doesn't know nothing. And he sits just near to the shoes, near to the door. Subhanallah, he said, this is the place where I need to sit. Fine, I'm, I'm equal with everybody. This is tawaza, humility. So this is such a big topic, my friends. The person who takes this topic, so one junaid, then thousands of junaids, will get better than that. So we need to attain this manzil, this des- destination. Tawaza, two angels, two angels. Listen, in the hadith is stated that two angels are always with a person. Because this is an important to- topic for us, isn't it? Very great, important point. So Allah Ta'ala has prepared that two angels, they travel with us, they are with us, and every moment they are watching one observation. Is he going towards kibar pride or towards humility, sincerity? And this is our life, the basis of our life, the basis of our success, brothers. So every human being needs to think, that am I going to die involved in shirk, or am I going to die with humility and sincerity, and as a humble servant? So which, towards which direction is this person going? The angels are observing these two. So what deen has he understood? What is he understood from the Qur'an? What is he attained from salah? Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. Another hadith I remember now. That Allah Ta'ala was asked uh, by Musa alayhi salam, that Allah, tell me that what is the action that you will like the most on the day of judgment that you'll accept. Allah answered on Musa, you ask about my preference in this generation. All the people who pray salah, you pray as well. And due to this one reason, I will accept your salah. And Musa alayhi salam said, what's that reason Allah? And Allah said, tawaza, humility. You have to be humble and sincere. Ibadah is fine, it's good. But bring yourself to the stage that you are humble and sincere and you have humility. So Allah Ta'ala can accept that this struggling and practicing and worshipping. Why do we do this? It doesn't mean that we shouldn't worship and struggle. Everything will come of use. As salah will be useful, tabliq, and Quran, and dhikr, and everything, all ibadah, will be given to us with reward, but only at that time, when we take that practice to the level of acceptance, when? When we create tawaza within our lives. Humility and humbleness. So he, Allah said, Musa, that I will accept prayer on this point of tawaza. And you ask him about what I'm happy about. Tawaza is the basis for success. Whoever is humble and sincere. So what's the reason? Because the opposition to it is kibar. So tawaza is that we are human beings. Allah, we want your servanthood. Allah, we want to be true human beings with humility and humbleness. This is what we want. And we should be so simple. We should lower ourselves and never consider ourselves as better than others. Why? Because everything, tawaza will come in this way. That everything around us, everybody around us, we should consider Allah has given me respect. Allah has given me the house. Allah has given me my car. Allah has given me my ilm. Allah has given me Quran. Allah has given me qirat. Allah has given me recitation. Allah has given me this prayer mat. Allah has given me Sufism. Allah has given me dhikr. Everything if it's given by Allah, it's not mine. It's not mine. And when I am stuck to this, that Allah Ta'ala has given, if Allah can give this, then tomorrow He can take as well. So what will happen? What will be spoiled, O Sufi? What Shaykh will teach us? That Mulana, that Shaykh, that believer, what will he do? That Have you not seen Allah Ta'ala takes Quran to the hearts of people? I've seen one person complained recently. What can I say to you? He's a khatib and he uh, reads regularly. And he said, I am upset. He said, I'm leaving the imamat. Uh, I said, no, no, don't do that. He said, no, that I can't read the Quran anymore. And he's a hafiz of great status. So this is all Allah gives and takes, gives and takes. And this carries on. Nothing belongs to us and nothing will be get due to this. If we get, we'll get to on one point. That we should have bandagi, humility and humbleness. And if we get this, then we have attained promotion. 
So this is why understand this topic. It's a great topic that today I wanted to share with you. That this veil came from away from my mind. That why did this occur, this event? And that brother, that poor soul had nothing too specially bad. That everyone continues to try to do this. Everyone in this field thinks he's the best of many people, worshippers and zakirs. And there's nothing we could say was too special. He got the rank and the status. He used to recite nats and do this. He did this, the bleak. All the whole world is doing this. But this point he did that no one in the world did. And he had tawaza, humbleness, and he had humility and sincerity. And I give you the first example. And this was the reason for his life change. Tariq Jamil sahab keeps saying other things. But the reason for his change was this. He changed at that time. That dog changed him. The dog changed him, changed his life. And that's, at that time, he left behind his past. He cried. He lamented. He, he had regret and remorse. He said, Allah, I do tawbah. Now today, from today, I want to take the path of your servanthood. Then he wandered around. Mashallah, he, he met other peoples and Mawlana's, etc. Fine. But that's when the reality of his life came. And the final moment was the same. So up to the death, I tell you that whoever speaks about him in the world today and prays him and says in the end, everyone comes to the same conclusion. Ah, he had a great akhlaq, great conduct. Great manners, good behavior. He never took revenge on anyone. He never said bad to anyone. Everyone comes to that same point. And that's the great point here. That what was his house like? What was he like outside, inside? In no place. Everywhere you will see, we will see weaknesses. People will say that he had weaknesses. Fine. He was corrected. Then he went away. He had a beard. Maybe he trimmed it. These things happen in life. You will see this, isn't it? He had a beard. He trimmed it. Maybe he went to sing again. Then he kept the beard again. Then he went to the bleak. Then he trimmed it. Then he took the path again. And it took him quite a few years. Six, seven years. How many years? Seven years that apparently he did tawbah. But alhamdulillah, batini, spiritually, the dog had already made him do that tawbah. And no one could take that back from him. Nothing could. Allah Ta'ala had selected him. So my brothers, we, us, we should not just stay at a standstill, stagnant. We shouldn't stay thirsty in this world. We should strive, make effort. Let's look into our hearts. We are nothing. We are nothing. Whatever we are, who is the greatest? Allahu Akbar. Allah Zat is the greatest and He gives and takes. We are worse than animals. We should consider ourselves worse than all the people in the world and human beings. We are the worst and we should love everything around us. And everything we should consider better than us. Human beings, animals, whatever rank and status we have, we should say, I'm not, I'm not deserving of this. I am worse than everything. I should say, no, 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 I'm no good. If somebody gets something, no, no, I did this, I recognize this. He should say, no, no, why are you giving me this status and rank and this status? No, 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 no. So these words you said to me and this is... The, and the, the person becomes angry because this is drama. I have got this status. You're not giving me recognition. Why didn't you give me a title? Why didn't you give me these titles? Why didn't you introduce me properly? Why didn't you praise me? I'm a sheikh. I'm a teacher. I should be glorified. And you called me like a common man. This is not right. This is not befitting of my status. This is no. This is drama. Ah, I was talking about the two angels. Then I will conclude. The two angels always are with us human beings. Me, you, everybody. Two angels. So they have been given a duty. The two angels. What is their duty? The angel's duty is that look at this person, that when this person practices an action, and when he does any action, such an action, this person that goes towards kibber, pride, then the other angel was told that you look at his actions that go towards humility. So two angels. One angel assesses actions based on pride, the other angel looks at actions based on humility and malice. So when the angel with the pride, straight away he turns to Allah and says, Allah, this individual, Allah destroy him. Allah make him wretched and take him into the fire of hell, the angel says. Because he's looking out for the actions mixed with pride. Straight away that angel makes that dua. And when that person does the action of servanthood and humility and humbleness, the other angel says, Allah accept him. Your promise is that you elevate people. Allah take him to the heights, take him to the heights. And this happens with us all the time. Remember this point. So in every moment, second tawaza, the game is played out. I give the example of a child. In the house, Hazrat Aisha Sadiqa radiallahu anha said tawaza. That subhanallah, every quality she mentioned, but she said tawaza, oh, my husband was so great, so much akhlaq, so beloved was he, that we, we want to do something and, and he would help us in the house. Sometimes I would do cleaning, he would clean with me at the house. Why? He was the Nabi, the Prophet, he had a high status. But Rasulullah never showed his status that I'm the Prophet. And I am glorious and oh, cleaning the house is just too lowly for me. No, no, no. This was tawazo. Never should a person think that this duty in my home is bit, not befitting of my status, lower than my status. This seat, I can't sit here. I can't sit on the floor here. These people are lower than me. No. Everything 
should seem to a person as better than me and I'm worse than everything else and Allah is the greatest. That's how we should think. SubhanAllah, Hazrat Aisha said, my husband, my shawr was like this, who was Rahmatullah al the Prophet of Allah, the Nabi of Allah, that he never made me consider that if something broke the shoe, he would fix it, he would clean the house or knitting, sewing. And today does the husband do this? The Sufi, he's a alim, he's a hafiz. And we will tell people about our rights, our wives, that this is my rights. Oh, servants of Allah, why are you telling the wife your rights? You should ask the wife, that what are your rights, the wife, that I have to deliver these to you? Or will you tell them about your rights? Whenever you speak, then oh my haku, you know I'm this. My wife, you know what is my haq? You need to serve me, you need to do this for me. You should do this for me. And subhanAllah, and she will say that you are telling me what are your rights. Then what about my rights? How will you feel? You should keep reminding and revising the rights of your children and your family. And the list will give to the wife, hey, you didn't do this and it's written here. The wife should be like this and she should do like this. What is this? What point is, look at the wife and the children, the rights we have to give to them. Allah will ask us on the day of the day, how did you fulfill the rights? We need to revise this. And meet this out. So this is the balance we need to bring into our life. If we don't, then we will lose out. So this example Rasulullah gave to us, not just that Allah's wali, the greatest Nabi, the Prophet, Imam Mulambiya. And he is demonstrating in the world and in his house how to have humility and humbleness. So tawaza is worship. The children, the camel, goat, animals, everything around us. Rasulullah demonstrated humility. He used to give love to the animals, to the goats, to the birds. To children, look at the waza. Rasulullah said, the child is there. Rasulullah said, would stop, play with him, listen to the child. Medina, there was a mad woman. A mad woman in Medina. And the sahaba there, and she stood at the door. And she came, Imam Bulambiya, the head of the Prophet, everyone knew she was a mad woman. And Rasulullah ushered, and uh, Rasulullah stood up, and the Sahaba said, Where are you going, Rasulullah? Oh, she's calling me. And she said, I want to speak to you. She was mad, a little bit mental. And Rasulullah said, La. She said, Not here, outside in the Maidan. And um, now the test. Imagine the Sahaba, they're standing, that she's mad. Why is the Rasulullah going to her, grab her, put her to the back, put her to the side? No. So Rasulullah went with her, and it was hot, extremely hot that time. Extreme heat. Imagine the temperature that she sat, and Rasulullah was listening and her words carried on and on for hours she kept on on and on you know how people they start they don't stop uh, Rasulullah was listening and tawaz humility and Rasulullah said if you need have any need after this call me because who listens to you ah then the sahaba said has Umar ya Rasulullah that she's mad she's not mentally fed when she talks to people she never stops so how comes did you not hear her before why did you give yourself so much pain and difficulty what was the answer that Umar that nobody listens to her if I don't listen to her then who will listen to her subhanallah so this is Sufism, my brother, Sufism. This is how a person's heart should be humbled and lowered. Humbled and lowered. What a great example that we have in front of us. Now, in my heart, that if I have this feeling, I come in and everyone should stand, isn't it? I said, sit. And if in my heart, I feel everyone should stand, and in my heart, I have the desire, people, why didn't they stand for me? If I come, everyone should shake my hands and kiss my hands. Eh? Should I have this? This is nafs and desires, isn't it? So let's look at these points. How did Rasulullah balance this? It's lazim on us, ehtanam, manners, it's lazim. That if there's a ustad, your teacher, your father, chacha, uncle, especially uh, your teacher, your sheikh, it's lazim to have respect. We have to have respect. But how is the balance attained? How does Allah Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam give us the balance? What is the defining line? That we have to do the action, but how do you do it? We have to look at this point. We have to demonstrate the respect. Obviously the sheikh, the murid, has a love for his sheikh and the teacher. Some have love, some don't have. Everybody knows about this in their heart. Some people have automatic love. What can they do? They have so much love. Just like the father and the son have love. And subhanAllah, some children, they are immersed in the love of the parents. So two points come out, they're very extreme. Now, what's happening here? So what's the point here? Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that when you come in and the sahaba kram used to stand. And Rasul Sallallahu said, there's a point that don't stand for me. Don't stand for me. And this was a dars that was given. An explanation. And the request that the feeling in the heart, Rasulullah Sallallahu had that desire in his heart. And look at the point here. Rasulullah said that in my heart, I don't have the desire that anybody should stand for me. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam declared this fact that in my heart, I don't have the feeling that you should stand for me. And one condition was presented. And a point I'm explaining to you very, uh, it's like a, a, a light point here. The Rasulullah said that in my heart, I don't have the desire that you stand for me. So why do you stand? Don't stand for me. Very clearly Rasulullah said this. And on the other side, the person comes, the majlis is there. And Imam Ulambiya, what did he say? So said, the stand that your sardar has come. Your chief has come. So two opposite things, isn't it? Two hadith. So what a balance that Rasulullah SAW showed here. Would this mean that your sardar stand for your chief? And all the sahaba stood. So here's the point here, the contrast. 
for the Imam of the Anbiya, Rasulullah SAW said, don't stand, but stand for the, for the Sardar, the chief. So the balance here is that, that the person who has in his heart the feeling that the people should stand, then, subhanAllah, that then, because the person has pride in his heart, but the person who doesn't have the design in his heart, but Allah Ta'ala has given him the status, then we need to stand for that person. We need to stand for that person. So we don't need to stop there. We don't need to cease there. So there's the balance here. Do you understand what I'm saying? So here, the two things that we see, that for Mashaykh, the walis of Allah, that you'll see, there's a very delicate point I've explained to you, that do this or don't do this, totally. So this is right, that Rasulullah his sunnah that has been explained to us, people haven't understood this point. Straight away they throw the fatwa, oh the shirk here, oh he's taking people to pick up his shoes, and they want excuses, oh they're standing for him. But you can, have you asked the heart of that person, why don't you read the other hadith? Because Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us such beautiful and great delicate teaching that he taught the Sahaba that if a person is higher in status, then you have a just by passion in your heart that you want to stand and kiss his hand and give respect. So the respect and the permission is there because in your heart you have the feeling you want to give respect and that person you give him the respect doesn't have the feeling in his heart that he wants recognition. Those people have heart clean. They don't care if people stand or not. They don't have that worry. So he doesn't have that desire or the worry. But our duty is that when we see such a great person it allows him to respect him and the heart is saying this it's not fake not made up your heart feels you should stand and kiss his hand then you have ijazah and permission to do this totally you have ijazah so this is tawaza these are all the meanings of tawaza humility and humbleness and you can describe this and explain this so my brothers this is a big point do dua to Allah that we should work on our hearts and we should touch this maqam and this height tawaza humility sincerity Humbleness. We should have a lot of sincerity. The Quran has told us this as well. That when you walk, walk with humbleness. Lower yourself. I can't remember the verse. There are various verses with regards to humbleness. Lowering oneself. Lowering oneself. Allah Ta'ala doesn't love a haughty person. Broad chested. Big shoulders. People should be walking behind me. Recognizing me. And then a person like that. You should walk faster so that people become distant. Yeah, I've seen people like this, people like this in the world. That I observe these things in it, that the people are walking with him, then he starts to go faster so that they stay behind me and I stay in front. I want to be in the front and recognize, no, no. He then starts to go slow and others go in front of him. We should say, no, I'm going slow and you go in front of me. So there's a Latifa here, a person who is class fellow and he went faster. No, no, keep behind me so people see. And he went faster. Then that person turned around and went away. And when he turned around and looked, the person wasn't even there. And he was ashamed. Oh, the person's not even with me anymore. He's left me. Why? These things where you desire recognition and fame and status. Kibar doesn't give us anything in this world or thereafter. But the person who has tawaza, humbleness, see Allah gives uruj. Allah show this just now that this is the respect. And this was Junaid Jamshid. Do you understand the point? Jamshid. That such a maqam of tawazo and Allah has shown this sign. That look here, the whole dunya, Allah Ta'ala has shown here, that I elevate the people. Illa rafa Allah. Allah Ta'ala says that I show the heights and look at this height Allah Ta'ala gives. The whole world, everyone in the world is praising this person. Everyone. And he doesn't know himself. He doesn't know himself that which topic have I become famous of. Because he didn't have any special topic and he knew himself better. He, was, he knew that inside, maybe I'm a hollow box. Empty. But there's something that without the struggle, Allah wanted to show these heights, that this is a great amal, come on this practice, and you inshallah, your ibadat will be accepted. And if you have humility, humbleness, and you do not get nothing from pride, may Allah give us all the tawfiq to do amal on this. Ameen, recite the Ruh Sharif.